Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. General reminder for those who don't know, MIC is having a one year anniversary event coming up where Bao is going to be trading live in front of members. It's coming up August 17th, mark your calendars. As an added benefit to our members, this event is 100% entirely free for our annual and lifetime members. While lifetime on top of that get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it free again for annual and lifetime members. And if you're interested in signing up for this event and or attending, DM TBradley90 in the MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, today we have a very special video for you guys, just like every week, but today, one of our head moderators, Austin, who goes by Aloha Trader in chat, is back for his second round of his weekly Thursday webinar. He is both long and short biased, and Austin is going to talk about MIC strategies, market conditions, and he takes members' questions live and answers them. While this is just a preview of the full-length, almost two-hour webinar, if you want to watch the full-length or any of our exclusive content, then become in MIC member. So yeah, uh, this is going to be the second webinar uh, in the series and uh, let's get to it. So the order of operations, I'm going to be going through um, important trades. It's important is a very funny word to use in this slow market, but I tried to pick the trades that were uh, kind of the most important, a couple of them today, uh, because it was such a slow week. I actually pulled from today. Uh, we're going to go through market segment. I'm hoping to do this every single week. We've got a couple key topics I want to go over. Uh, psych center is the new is the new segment where I talk about a psychological aspect of trading. Um, I, I, this is probably going to be my favorite segment. So, but I'll try not to burn out on all my favorite topics right away. I'll try to spread that out, and then we're going to end with Q and A. So let's get to it. All right, so. Last, last week, I talked about the market and how it was just after earnings season and we just had like a flurry of IPOs at JMIA and Tiger and, you know, Lyft and, you know, we actually, and we got Uber, um, there's a couple more pins. So we had all these IPOs going on and earnings season was just coming to a close. And so the, the small cap market was really dead and it, it's kind of continuing this week, but I feel like we're starting to regain some traction in the small cap land i feel like we are trying to the the market is trying to get one more pop before summer hey val uh, we're trying to get one more pop before summer because it's close and you can kind of see this in the attempts in the recent days we've seen pdsb uh, a super super low float uh try to go and it failed um eltk was today's runner and it tried to go clrv was yesterday anyway so I want to go over some important trades. I want to start with this one because I already recapped this one. So this one should be pretty fast. Roku. Uh, Roku was um, just, I, I had two trades on it. I had a quick scalp on it. And then I had kind of like a, a failure to continue higher short on it. Kept that trade. So let's go on to the next one. UVXY, um, I don't want to go over this again. Uh, I'll start by saying that new traders should not trade UVXY. It's a very complex setup. But um the reason why you will see, I want to explain the reason why you will see some traders trading this is because a lot of people like to trade the UVXY when there's fear in the market because that's what UVXY is. It's based off the VIX, which is the fear index of the market. Uh, UVXY trades off volatility. Um, uh, UVXY uh, trades on the volatility and the uncertainty of the market. Moving on. And CLRB. So this was um this was a this is gonna, this is going to be a fun one, right? So. CLRB was a trade where I was willing to take because this I, coming into this week, um, earnings seasons is over. This is, I was really kind of hoping that maybe this one might be the one. I'm always looking for the stock that's going to ignite the small caps again, right? I'm always looking for that stock. I look for it on ELTK today. I looked for it on CLRB yesterday. And so the first thing I noticed was that like in the morning it ramped up, made a higher low, ramped up, and it made another higher low. So I was thinking, okay, this stock is trending. Now it's a very steep trend, right? It's a very steep trend, but I'm willing to bet that it's going to continue because people are kind of desperate for that trade. And I was right originally. And um, I, here I was willing to recycle. 
And if you look at the daily chart, if you guys have your, I, I couldn't fit both on the screen, but if you look at your daily chart on CLRB, you're gonna see a $2.65 level. I really liked it. The reason why I entered the trade was because um, the 60, 265 was the higher low, right? Originally, I had this, this, and this as a higher low. But then as we get larger, I start to consider this and this is the higher low. And you're gonna see as the time goes on, uh, I'll show you this in another trade too. As the time goes on, the, the, the lows and highs, see, I don't count this low. I don't count this as a low right here. If I did, I wouldn't wanna be selling into here. I count this as just on the way up. So that's my rule of thumb. If, I, if I'm willing to start my position, even a feeler position, right? Um, at the exact time that I want to borrow it, I will borrow it. Or if I, you know, if it's a B setup, but I think I might get to use it, I'll locate small. But you know, if it's a B setup and I'm not willing to start, I'm not locating it. I used to um, locate everything, but then I started longing and now I only locate the A's for sure pre, pre, um, pre opportunity to start. And I only locate the B's if I'm at the moment of ready to put the starter position on. What is confirmation of a stop? Should the candle break the support line and close below? Yeah, I kind of just talked about that. Like there are certain, certain situations where um, it depends, like if, if it's that critical moment um, where this is my stop, but like I do want to give it that wiggle room, it kind of depends. If it slams on high volume, um, I, I typically don't need to let it, um, I typically don't need to let it close. Like if it's a super large volume candle relative to the other volume candles or super large range candle relative to the other range, I don't need to like let it continue, like let it close. Cause like, what if you have a, what if you had that, you know, what if you had that 1440 stop on IOVA and you said, well, let me just see if it closes, but it just tanked on a candle. Like imagine that was a red volume like something like that, you don't want to let it close and let it go from like 1440 to 20 to 10 to 14 to 1390. You don't want to let that happen to you. So if it's, if it's super high range or super high volume, I'm typically not waiting for it to close. If it's just kind of like you can, it dips and on the level two, you can kind of see that it's very like weak, then I might be, I might want to let it close or do that over and under. It all depends on the price action. I am not attending the webinar just here on the phone. No problem. If you finished it, we'll ask in the weekend mentoring. Thanks. If you answered, I will hear it in the recording later. Well, that was funny. Should have read that later. Um, earlier. I do not even know how to borrow. No borrows. I don't. <laughs> no borrows. No worry. That, there's always a next plan. When in bankroll building phase, do not stress about finding locates. Probably LeBron James is trading already. Got all those. <laughs> How much percent wise is too overextended to take a long in your opinion? But as Jesse Livermore says, right? Like the stock's never up too high to buy. But in small cap land, I don't think he was referring to, <laughs> I think it was general, but when, you, when you're talking about a pig, so 300% is about where I draw the line. 300%, um, even 200%, I get a little bit sheepish. 200 to 300%, like I, I used to have this funny joke where, um, it's, the, it's called the 100% pattern. All you have to do is wait, when, when low flows are really hot, all you gotta do is buy a stock that's up 100% and sell it at 300%. Because there was a time when like, everything goes up to 300%. And for, for what I've noticed, for the most part, in a day, stocks will typically kinda, people like, bought, demand starts to thin at around 300%, unless you got a true black swan on your hands. But yeah, like 200 to 300% and I won't. I, I will still long 100% stock up if the price action is so good because how many people are willing to short a stock that's up 100%? Normally those are loaded and that's how you get to those 200 to 300%. People short it because it's up 100% and of course it's too much. That was a lot. What helped you to get over the fear of pulling the trigger? Time, bro. Um, yeah, just it, like, so kind of what I talked about earlier, the, you have to slowly grow the grow the ability to take risk and when you zoom when you have that zoomed out perspective where i'm gonna make a thousand trades i can't be afraid of not taking this one because it's a loser or it could be a loser right you know you gotta you gotta put your faith in a, on a multitude of hands 
you can't put your faith in one trade. Sometimes you have a fear of trading because if, if you lose on this stock, it's, it, it's, it's super detrimental to your psyche, your psyche or your account, right? If you're making this trade super important, then it's going to just raise the anxiety of entering the trade. So that's kind of how I got over that fear. It's like, well, I kind of just have to throw my dices out, kind of got to put my cards on the table and no one trade is going to be the defining um, moment of my success. It's going to be the successes or failures of multiple trades. Do you trade under $1 stocks? I do not. Um, and only because I suck at them. Um, and, and really under $2, I really suck. Um, <laughs> I suck bad. I kind of went over this, um, on a couple of calls too, when people ask me about that, you're like, why did you take this? And it's, um, my excuse is that I'm a very, um, I'm not good when it comes to competitive pricing and cheaper stocks have competitive pricing. Every, you know, everyone conglomerates into the like 66 cents and then 67 cents and then 68 cents. And like, you know, I, I just wanted to get filled a little bit above 65 and there's only one place I really want to get filled above 65 cents on my cover is 66. And I end up having, being at 66 and I'm not, I don't get filled and 67's on the bid and I put it at 67. I end up taking it off at 69 on the ask and I've lost four cents, which is, you know, that's huge on a 60 cent, 66 cent trade. And that typically happens to me. So that's why I don't. But like, you know, if I did trade them, I guess, well, what's the usual plan is um, my usual plan would probably be just basic support and resistance. And I, I would, you know, my plan is probably instead of 66, I'd probably want to put it at 67. I'm willing to take a little bit less of the game. That's probably how I would go about it. Um, you know, just still the same price action rules over and under support, which one's going to hold? Why is it holding? Why is it not? NBY. So this doesn't really have a lot of volume today. Are you talking about maybe the day it did have the volume? I, I don't know what the news was. Um, yeah, yeah, the, a couple of days ago here. Um, how would I, how would I trade it? Um, well, so for the first thing I look at is, you know, we're, we're getting up here into one, one dollar looks like pretty good resistance. Um, this is kind of where we broke down 75 looks like a pretty good resistance. And when we're spiking up, I'm immediately looking at these levels like 71, 75, you know, I, I guess you got to really zoom in. It's important to zoom in on these small caps because cents matter, right? Yeah. 73, 71, one dollar obviously is whole so I'm, I'm i'm looking at the most relevant the most relevant volume there's no volume levels in recent history so i just go for the most recent level it's gonna be probably that 73 level um i might group that with 75 depending on how it trades um the one dollar level um and yeah probably that 70 70 cents level so yeah, so I'm just, I'm, I'm watching it and like it's blowing right through 70. So I'm not using 70. So I'm kind of looking at 73 next blows through and blows through 75. So I'm, so I'm, I'm kind of letting, I, I'm not doing anything here. I'm kind of waiting for it to show me what it's going to do. And like, if it's starting to hold a certain level or if it's starting to top out at a certain level, like I guess, 75 the 73 to 75 is the most critical level so i'm just observing what it's doing here you know i might put on a short maybe if it broke 70 proving 75 is the top right here wait my desk is freezing what's going on there yeah yeah so i might put on a short there risking there but I'd probably get stopped out later um but yeah that's basically how i'm doing it what's the most important level how is it reacting to the level I look 60s. Perfect. I didn't even count that example. <laughs> um, how many stocks are you watching at a time? Um, 
Also, do you set alerts for back burner plays? I do set alert for back burner plays. I, I have a thinkorswim alert where I probably have like 25 stocks on alert right now just to alert me when they start to become active. Um, and like if, if there's ever a play that's in play that I might want to revisit later, I'll put an alert out just so it ever, if it ever crosses that level, I'll know about it. So like I did that with MXC and I did that with ELTK. Um, I normally, so I have eight, I have like eight stocks that I watch at a time, a main four and a back four. Um, and I'm mainly watching my main four. Like Roan has been in play for a week now. So what's the question with Roan? Oh, let me stop. Like, do I want the, like a back burner play? Okay, so like, would I set an alert for for this? Um, yeah, so if, if I had a short thesis on this, uh, I thought this was going to keep going down. I typically only like to trade stocks that, yeah, you know, if if I was going to short this kind of like a larger time frame swing short, I guess, yeah, I would probably have an alert set out, you know, over like you know four dollars just to see like, hey, maybe I can get short on a pop that day risking, you know, five or 450 build into a strength. Yeah, like that swing short. Yeah, I might put it, if, if I had a short thesis on this, I don't know what's going on here. But yeah, I would definitely, I'd probably put an alert out at like four. So that maybe like if it like bounces up, we can come back. And it, see, the thing about setting alerts is it doesn't hurt. It like doesn't hurt to ever just set an alert. I know you say you don't use level two that much, but what are your thoughts on having level two open at the same time for the tape? Well, I always do have level two open at the same time. I'm, I always have level two open. One for all the orders to watch the speed and another for strictly blocks and spot money. Are you talking about tape or like the montage? I think you're talking about the, mon uh, the tape, like time and sales, yeah. So, I mean, it's a, uh, so, like again, like that matters more on a micro time frame. That's I don't typically do a whole lot of super micro time frame ideas, but I think yes. I think like if I was a scalper, it's something that I would be something that I would consider. I do actually have on my level two. I filter out anything less than like um, fifty shares, and and I would do like a hundred, but sometimes like you'll see a whole bunch you'll see like, you can see like 10,000 shares go in 100 shares at a time. And I do want to be aware of that. So um, I do filter out the, the, the super small noise. But yeah, I don't think it's a bad idea. I do, I do think it's more valuable if you're a smaller time frame trader. Is the ticker still day one if it spikes after hours and then runs the next morning? Yeah, so if it spikes after hours in the next day, the next day is the day one. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.